Welcome to the Laverne Church of the Brethren's weekly audio message. Here at the Laverne Church of the Brethren, we create a Christian community called by Christ to be inclusive, caring, and peace-minded. We affirm that people of any race, ethnic identity, gender identity, sexual orientation, ability, age, economic status, faith tradition, or life situation are welcome in our congregation. We believe in compassionate service, stewardship of creation, respect for diversity, and nonviolent reconciliation for differences among all people, nations, and faith traditions. We claim no creed but the New Testament as exemplified by the life of Christ. We strive to follow the way of Jesus. And through these efforts, we seek to grow ever closer to the mind and heart of God. And now let us ground ourselves as we enter into today's message. Um, Today is a a really, really special uh, day. On Friday afternoon last week, uh, the University of Laverne inaugurated their 19th president, Dr. Pardis Madavi. Um, It was just a beautiful, fun, hopeful, and joyous event, and I am so absolutely delighted that Dr. Madavi has so graciously agreed to bring our message this morning. Thank you. (laughs) And I've asked Sandra Wagner to please come and introduce Dr. Madavi more fully. Sandra is the university, um, university chaplain. Thanks, Sandra. Good morning. I have the privilege of working with President Madavi. And as uh, Carol just said, the inauguration was such a celebration, a festive day, and really an affirmation of her uh, as the right person, right time. And, and I hope the celebration has been so wonderful, uh, as wonderful it has been for, for many of us. Our church community is forever interconnected with the university because members of this community founded the institution 132 years ago. And so as a way of introduction to Dr. Madavi, I want to just draw on a brief quote by a biologist, uh, Stuart Kaufman, who says this, the universe in its persistent becoming is richer than all of its dreamings. The founders of the University of Laverne had a dream with core values and a purpose-centered mission, and in, in its own persistent becoming has become richer than all of its ancestors' dreamings, our dreamings. So for 132 years, the university has been evolving and turning and transforming and becoming a new expression of that dream. With Dr. Madavi's leadership, the university is beautifully evolving transforming. In just two months, already the campus is becoming a deeper place of belonging and inclusion and safety so that learning can thrive for all. Dr. Madavi brings a lens that builds bridges, promotes equity-centered education, and connects higher education with the wider community in ways that promotes democracy, well-being, and thriving communities. She's bringing a lens that feels very familiar to those of us here at the church with a lens of justice and service and community, even as it is evolving toward a new expression of those values um, with her leadership. Dr. Madavi has roots in Iran, Minneapolis, and Southern California. She has degrees in diplomacy and world affairs, international affairs, and a doctorate in anthropology. She was a professor at Pomona College earlier in her career and then moved into academic administration as a dean, most recently as provost and executive vice president at the University of Montana in Missoula. She is a leader in education, an academic, an author of many books, and she is here with us in this community. President Madavi, this church welcomes you, is here as a partner and supportive presence. 
please feel our excitement and blessing as the university continues to be ri richer than all of our dreamings. The scripture for today is from Matthew 5, verse 9. Blessed are those who work for peace. They will be called children of God. Good morning. I am humbled, grateful, but mostly humbled to stand before you today. I was so touched and grateful for the invitation that you all invited me to speak with you and offer a few words. The past 90 days for me have been an absolute whirlwind, and the past 90 hours, a bit of a groundswell. Waves of excitement have enraptured me. The kindness of this incredible community the dedication of our students, and the inspiration provided by our faculty, our staff, and this fine community. The learning has been tremendous, but in all this motion, in all this movement and excitement, the most powerful thing for me has been the reminder to take time to get quiet, to be still, and to bow to the humble whispers of spirit to listen, for to listen is to understand the pain and to understand the healing that this community needs. The brethren seeds of our founding at the University of Laverne sowed fertile ground for us, and for that I personally am grateful, for they are the core, the calling, that which keeps us rooted, the tree of knowledge that keeps us curious but gracious in dissent, the branches of truth, justice, and peace that the Lord gifts to us every day. Our brethren roots have given me the gift of rooting. I finally have found a place to call home, to be rooted. But our brethren roots also remind me that we were founded by an institution whose core values gave us purpose. Two values of the Church of the Brethren that have so resonated deeply with me since my arrival, and I owe much of my gratitude to our university chaplain, Sandra Wagner, for illuminating for me the incredible history of this church. But two of the values that I have been thinking on and praying on since my arrival are the twinning or interlocking values of peacemaking and simplicity. This church teaches us that we must be devoted to peacemaking, acting as instruments of reconciliation and justice. And of particular inspiration to me is the fact that this church teaches dissent as a step towards peacemaking, as a path towards justice, as a means to achieve true reconciliation. I myself have dedicated my life to this value, to speaking truth to power in my homeland of Iran, even if it meant I faced serious consequences, including becoming an exile from the motherland and told never to return home. But most recently, I have continued to be humbled by my sister in Iran, one of whom was recognized just last week, Nargis Mohammadi who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for 2023, exactly 20 years after Shirin Ebadi, the first Iranian woman and first Muslim woman to be awarded this highest prize, the Prize of Peace. I have known both of these women, have learned with them, have sat in community with them, and have learned dissent from them. They continue to inspire me to this day. I have also dedicated my career to promoting peace in the Middle East, a sad but noble cause that we continue to fight. I have worked to find ways to call out repressive regimes, 
to organize to keep activists whose commitment to nonviolent expressions have made them the victims of unending violence. We need only to look to the poisonings of the thousands of schoolgirls in Iran whose only crime was to stand in their classrooms to ask questions, to peacefully dissent. And sadly, this continues today in my homelands. The women of Iran who never give up hope embody the spirit of the Lord articulated in Psalm 29, 11. The Lord will give power to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Activists like Shirin Ebadi, Nargis Mohammadi, and many of us pray thinking on this psalm over and over. What has been most inspiring for me in studying and working with feminist activists in the Middle East is the quiet strength that many of them embody. They teach us to find ways to express dissent peacefully, meaningfully, to remain in community. We don't always agree, but we speak, we discuss, we find peace. And we are unyielding in that work. Disagreeing but standing in disagreement, even when provoked, these women stand in peace, for they are at peace within themselves. As Bob just read to us, as Matthew 5, 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. But what allows for this peace? I have often wondered, on my weakest days, when turmoil threatens to bubble and boil inside me, what allows for women like those who sit behind bars in Iran's most notorious prison, Evin, for great peacemakers like Aung San Suu Kyi or Nelson Mandela, who paid heavy prices for their activism, what allows them to continue to sit in peace? And then I realized, as I became very quiet and very still, and sat in that stillness at the feet of some of the greatest peacemakers of our time, that they are able to make peace and stand in that power because they have made their own peace through their connections with the Lord. I did the same some 15 years ago when I was held in the darkest moment of my life. We know that the greatest wars are those that are fought within. And until peace is found inside of us, until we learn our own demons, bring them out into the daylight, tackle them head on, we will not be able to bring the message of the Lord's peace to the people with authenticity. Sometimes we face those demons when our life or the road presented by the Lord feels the most filled with darkness. That is when you use the Lord's gift of free will to make your choice to follow, to shine the light, to move out of the darkness. I made the same choice when I was held 15 years ago. Finding that peace within, learning to face your inner wars requires one thing, stillness. But finding the strength to be still is a challenge we all continue to take. To me, the roots of the trees of simplicity intertwine tightly, if not overlap, with stillness. The brethren articulate this value as follows. Simplicity, live simply so that we have room in our lives for God and for others. But to seek simplicity, we must be still. For when we are still, it is only then that we can fully invite that simplicity. And in that, I was reminded by the two interconnecting Psalms. Psalm 37, seven, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And of course, the one you know I hold dearest to my heart, Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Stillness and patience have not always been easy for me because my life is that of the in-between, living inside the hyphen of multiple identities, always seeking to be understood, reaching for the next branch on the tree, the next rung on the ladder, a path forward introjecting myself by propelling myself into a future that doesn't exist, eclipsing a past that is but a shadow. Many of you heard me speak on Friday evening at my inauguration about the concept of the bridge. 
I told stories of my life as a bridge person, highlighting that the bridge is a place too, that the in-between spaces hold the greatest treasures, that islands can be overrated, and that for me, the University of Laverne is a grand bridge built by the woods of the trees of knowledge, spirit, faith, and justice that are the very core of this fine church. I spoke of my journey to embracing the perspectives afforded by the bridge, to embrace what I had seen as weakness, to understanding it as strength, and in that I was guided by the Lord. Seeking to understand and not be understood. But to gain that understanding, I noted I had to stop running, had to stop bouncing between islands, had to be still. For as attractive as the islands were, I had to wade into the ocean to climb up onto the bridge, to become quiet, and still to embrace my true self. And here I was reminded of the following Psalm, 107, 29. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. I had to become the waves in order to quell the storm inside me. And so I am reminded by these core values, peacemaking and simplicity, the gifts provided by this church, and thinking how the two go hand in hand to help us find the strength to be still. I think about my role now as a bridge between countries and regions that are at war, fellow countrymen and countrywomen who war with each other, and all of us who war within ourselves. I consider the weight of my role as a leader, as a president, as a mother, to always seek peace. And I am grateful for the reminder to be still, to know God, to know that I must find myself in that stillness and simplicity to find my way and stay closer to God, to strive for peace within and without, and finally, to spread the seeds of those trees and plant more. Thank you. We're so glad that you listened to the message today. If you're looking for an open and affirming, peace-loving, and justice-seeking congregation, consider visiting us for in-person worship on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. We'd love to meet you.